You know, the whole Old Testament is about Jesus Christ. The whole Old Testament points to Jesus. Uh, Jesus even said that the Old Testament scriptures testify of me. If you remember back in chapter 22, Abraham took his son Isaac up Mount Moriah, which would become part of Jerusalem. And there he bound Isaac and he, he offered Isaac, his son. And it was a profound picture of God giving his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, as a sacrifice for the sins of the world. Now in chapter 24, Abraham sends forth his unnamed servant to find a bride for his son. Chapter 24 is a picture of the present work of the Holy Spirit in the world. God has sent the Holy Spirit into the world to find a bride for his son, Jesus Christ. And the bride of Christ is the church. It's, it's you and me. If, if you're a believer, we're the bride of Christ. And so chapter 22, Isaac is offered up as a sacrifice, a picture of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross. And then here, chapter 24, Abraham sends his servant to find a bride for his son, Isaac, a picture of the father sending the Holy Spirit into the world to find a bride for his son, Jesus Christ. Again, in verse one, we're told that Abraham was old. He was well advanced in years and the Lord had blessed Abraham and all things. I love that. The Lord had blessed Abraham and all things. In every way. And what a wonderful statement. Abraham was old. He's, he's nearing the end of his life. And the Lord had blessed him in every way. And so Abraham said to the oldest servant of his house who ruled over all that he had, please put your hand under my thigh. And I will make you swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of the earth, that you will not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites among whom you dwell, but you shall go to my country and to my family and take a wife for my son Isaac. Abraham sends his servant back to Mesopotamia, where Abraham was from, to find a bride for his son Isaac, because Abraham did not want his son marrying a local pagan Canaanite girl. So he sends his servant. The name of the servant is not given here. He's an unnamed servant, but it, it's, it's Eliezer. We're told back in chapter 15, verse 2, that Eliezer was his, his chief servant. And as I said, this servant is a picture of the Holy Spirit going to find a bride for the Son. The name Eliezer means God is our help. God is our help. And Jesus uh, describes the Holy Spirit as the helper. That's a name for the Holy Spirit, the helper, the paraclete who comes alongside us and helps us. Uh, and, and Abraham here, he has his servant make a, an unusual oath. Abraham asks his servant to place his hand under his thigh or, or more accurately between his thighs. Uh, this, this gesture is something that's unique to the book of Genesis. We only see it one other time. Later in the book of Genesis, when Jacob asked Joseph to make an oath. Um, I don't know about you, but I prefer a simple handshake. You know, I don't need to put my hand between your thighs to promise to do something. I just shake your hand. And my, you know, my word is my bond here. Um, and Abraham instructs his servant to go back to Abraham's homeland to find a bride for Isaac. Now that's a 700 to 800 mile journey. And so verse five, the servant Eliezer says, perhaps the woman will not be willing to follow me to this land. <laughs> Must I take your son back to the land from which you, you, you came? The, the servant says to Abraham, I may have a hard time convincing a young lady to make that long journey back to this land with me. What if she's not willing to come all the way back to Canaan with me? Should I take your son Isaac, along with me on, on this journey, take him to your, your homeland. But Abraham said to him, Be, beware that you do not take my son back there. I don't want you taking Isaac back there. Promises of God are here. They're not back there. I want my son to stay here. Then he says, 
Look what he says, verse 7. The Lord God of heaven, who took me from my father's house and from the land of my family, and who spoke to me and swore to me, saying, to your descendants I give this land, he will send his angel before you, and you shall take a wife for my son from there. I love Abraham's answer in verse 7. You should take note of it. Abraham basically says, God will go before you. God will go before you and God will take care of it. God will work it out. You don't need to worry about how it's going to work out. You don't need to worry about all the, the what ifs. What if she's not willing to come with me all the way back to Canaan? You know, we, we have a, a, a tendency to be like Eliezer and, and worry about how things are going to work out. And we worry about the, the, the what ifs and what if this happens or what if that happens or what if this doesn't happen or what if it doesn't work out or how will it work? And we can overanalyze the thing. Abraham says to his servant, God will go before you and God will take care of it. Just trust the Lord. Now, if you're a note taker, these this passage, these are the last recorded words of Abraham and the Bible. So these are kind of his 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 parting words. At this point, Abraham has walked with the Lord for 60 years or more. And his final words are, don't worry, God will go before you and he will work it all out. Now, Abraham wasn't always so confident in God, was he? We've seen that in Genesis. There were times when he doubted God. There were times when he questioned God. There were times when he stumbled in his faith, there were times when, when he thought God would not work it all out and he needed to take matters into his own hands. But over the years, Abraham has matured in his faith because he has seen the faithfulness of God in his life. He's experienced the blessings of God. He has seen the promises of God fulfilled and God has never failed Abraham. And so now as an old man with 60 plus years of walking with God, his last bit of advice is, God will go before you. God will work it all out. You don't, you don't need to worry. Some, some wise advice. Some wise advice from a man who's walked with the Lord a long time. This reminds me of what David writes in Psalm 37. David says, I was young and now I'm old, yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken. David says, I've, I've lived a long life and I've never seen God abandon his people. Never, not once in all of my life. And here we are. The weekend after Thanksgiving, almost to the end of 2020. An unbelievable year. And yet God's been faithful, hasn't he? You're sitting here, you're watching. God's been faithful to us. And that's what Abraham has learned through his long life of walking with the Lord. God will just work it out. You don't need to worry about the details of it. And then he says in verse 8, And if the woman is not willing to follow you, then you will be released from this oath. Only do not take my son back there. Abraham says, hey, if she's not willing to come with you and make that journey then Eliezer, you're, you're clear of your responsibility. You have fulfilled your oath. The servant, again, is a picture of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit invites, but the Holy Spirit doesn't force. The Holy Spirit extends the invitation. The Holy Spirit invites people to trust Christ and have their sins forgiven and receive eternal life. But the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. And the Holy Spirit will not force a person to repent of their sins and trust in Christ against their will. He invites. He gives the invitation. The Bible says a person can resist the Holy Spirit. A person can harden their heart and stiffen their neck toward the conviction of the Holy Spirit. You know, Genesis chapter 6, verse 3, the Lord said, My spirit will not strive with man forever. The Holy Spirit invites, but a person may not be willing to repent of their sins and, and, and follow Christ. And Abraham says to his servant, hey, if, the, if the, you, you go, you give the invitation, but if the woman is not willing to follow you, then you will be released from this oath. 
invite her, but it's up to her to respond to the invitation.